My name is Dr. Charles Makel. I'm from Argonne National Laboratory, located uh, southwest of Chicago. I'm Diane Lauderdale. I'm a professor at the University of Chicago, and I'm an epidemiologist. As a computer modeling specialist, the MRSA modeling system consists of a set of models of individuals using techniques that we refer to as agent-based modeling and simulation. So, for example, if we have a population of people uh, uh, in Chicago, we would model their uh, daily activities, the kind of behaviors that they, they go through as they're going uh, through their daily activities, and establish uh, contact patterns for uh, how MRSA could possibly be transmitted from one individual to, to another based on a person's activities during the day, whether those activities be uh, in the community, uh, work, school, home, or in institutional settings, whether those be hospitals or, or uh, clinics of various types. We're taking advantage of a, a great deal of data that's been collected already, many of it, much of it by the federal government, and for other purposes, but it's going to be really useful to us. So the census, for example, collects data on everyone in the country, and from it we know what their age is, and their sex, and their race, and a, a bit about their other things about them, their occupation, where they live. We're using that data to build a model of the city of Chicago. But then we want to know what those people do, and how those different activities place them at higher or lower risk of contracting MRSA. Since 2003, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has had a really interesting data collection effort called the American Time Use Studies. They've collected data from large samples of the population, over 10,000 people a year, about what they do over a 24-hour period. So for example, they start out and say, it's 4 a.m. yesterday, what were you doing then? And someone would say, well, I was sleeping and I was at home. And they would ask, when did that stop? And they, they'd say, oh, at 6.30 I got up and, and then I did this and I did this and it, you know, 8 o'clock I got in a bus, and, and they walk through their 24-hour day. And these data have now been collected every year since 2003. So we have data on a great many people that gives us a realistic sense of how different kinds of people. So for example, you know, how does a 40-year-old Latino man in an urban area, what are the different kinds of patterns that he might typically have in his, in his work day? or in, in a weekend day. And we can take those data and use them to give our agents really realistic scripts for what they do over a 24-hour period, which helps us understand which activities place them in higher or lower risk for contracting MRSA. So what we would do in the simulation would be to model people's activities, establish the contact patterns, in terms of the duration of the contact, maybe the nature of the contact as well, depending on the setting that they're interacting with others in, and thereby uh, estimate from that what the likelihood of uh, transmission of the disease is from one in individual to another. Thus, we would build up a, a, a kind of a bigger picture of how the population as a whole uh, is both susceptible and becomes infected with uh, you know, the MRSA uh, pathogens. So when someone discovers that they have a skin infection, either they look at it, it hurts, we're not sure exactly what they do. There are many different reactions they could have. They could ignore it as long as possible, or they could cover it up and hide it so they don't have to talk about it, or they could think it might get better more quickly if they expose it to air. Once it, it MRSA infections typically develop a, a, a pussy area, and that will, it, people could have different reactions to when they see pus in a, a skin infection. They might decide to go ahead and pierce it themselves so it drains, and if that happens, they might cover it, or they might wash it and not cover it. They might, uh, at that point, decide they really need to seek medical care, or they might just turn to someone they trust, uh, their mother or a friend, and say, what would you do in this situation? They, uh, if they, if it is draining, they might uh, be very careful about covering it, 
or they might just wipe it with the towel that everyone in their family uses in the bathroom. How long they take before they go to a doctor also could matter because the doctor will tell them to cover it and will give very careful instructions about how to keep it clean and keep it from spreading to other people in the household. They might follow that advice or they might not because actually it could be a big burden to follow that advice. It could involve uh, you know, lots of special procedures that they don't normally have in their household. So what influences them all along the way to have those different reactions to the infection might play a very big role in how many people they are likely to spread the infection to. It might, for example, be that whether someone has insurance or not affects how quickly they seek medical care. Or it may be that they behave differently if it's an infection on their own skin versus their children's. It might be different if their child is two or if their child is 12. All these things could, could vary. It may also be that there are social factors that differ. There might be a, a different reaction for people who've had more education or less education, for people who've heard of MRSA versus people who haven't heard about it. The MRSA model, uh, besides being applied to Chicago, which we are doing on a, a first case uh, experimental basis, will also be applicable to other geographical areas. To apply it to another region, it would be necessary to, of course, collect data specific to that region, uh, data on variables that we've defined in the course of our work as being most uh, important to uh, understanding the, the MRSA uh, phenomenon. And, and secondly, um, we would have to, uh, researchers would have to collect data on the behaviors based on the populations of individuals and people within that other geographical area. Our hope is that this model is going to give us good estimates of what the population impact will be of changing people's and physicians' behaviors. How much can we decrease MRSA transmission or MRSA disease in the population if we could get physicians to always prescribe the most effective antibiotic first? What would be the effect if we could get everyone in the population to cover up an oozing wound right away? What would be the effect in the population if we could decrease transmission in a household once there is an infection by better communicating what household members need to do to prevent transmission? We are on the verge of what could be a revolution in the use of computers and simulation modeling to understand many of the processes around us, societal processes, that'll make us better able to um, allocate resources uh, more efficiently, be more effective in our treatment programs, and simply have a whole new uh, frontier available uh, to better understand these processes that we've been thinking about and working with for, for the past several decades.